Intel's $20 billion plan to build two new chip plants in Arizona. Welcome to my YouTube channel, where today we're diving deep into the story of a tech giant that revolutionized the world. Intel, the powerhouse behind a $220 billion semiconductor empire, didn't just shape the tech industry, it defined it. From groundbreaking innovations to navigating fierce competition, join us as we explore the legacy of Intel and how it built one of the most influential companies in history. Let's start with that Intel story though, because it is a fascinating one. Ryan Sanzi, you've been covering this closely, and you knew that Intel was making an announcement. We didn't know what exactly they would be saying. Intel has had a lot of push and pull, right, in terms of external and internal forces that have been pushing it in different directions in terms of its strategy. CEO Pat Gelsinger, who had been at the company, returned to the company and actually doubled down on some of what some critics of Intel had been pushing it away from. That is the foundry business, making chips for other companies at the same time that Intel has also got to fix its own chip making business for itself. He left in 2009 to be the CEO of VMware, just returning a couple of months ago as CEO of Intel. But the big headline here, Intel investing $20 billion to build two fab or chip making plants in Arizona. And Gelsinger pulled no punches on this call, Julie, last night, saying Intel remains committed to making its own chips, I would say, pushing back to a lot of Wall Street critics. And also third point Stan Loeb, who was agitating for the company to explore alternatives, which included potentially getting out of making its own chips, outsourcing that business, saving money, and likely plowing back into dividends and boosting the stock price. Gelsinger said, no, that is not going to happen. But Julie, as I was watching this, I was surprised that there were two cameos here. Not a lot of people expected it, but Microsoft's CEO, Satya Nadella, hopped on the call last night, as well as IBM's new CEO, Arvind Krishna, both voicing support for Gelsinger's initiatives. Here's what they said. As chips become more specialized and cloud architectures become more optimized for new workloads, we will need to collaborate to co-design the next generation of systems, from the hardware to the systems, to the software. The technology is driving the next technological revolution. Hybrid cloud, AI, 5G, the intelligent edge, quantum, are all together going to help unleash the potential of data and advanced competition that will create immense economic value. That relationship was essentially ended late in 2020, as Apple is now making its own chips called the M1. One would think he's open to opportunities because presumably it wasn't Intel's decision necessarily to end that relationship. So we'll see what happens. But meantime, the ripple effect that we've seen across the industry has been really interesting because what Intel is doing with this move, it's going to more squarely compete with the likes of Taiwan Semiconductor and Samsung. We've seen pressure on those stocks. And if they're building out new facilities, they're going to need equipment. And so we've seen a lot of the equipment makers get a boost from this announcement as well, to your point, sort of illustrating the size and importance of what Intel and ambition of what Intel is planning here, the effect on the rest of the industry. So likely you're probably also going to see good quarters out of HP, out of Dell. Those trends continue as we all continue to work from home, but they lowered their full year guidance about 20 cents below where the consensus was as they invest these billions of dollars to build out these manufacturing plants. And there's still a heavy skepticism on Wall Street, at least out this morning in terms of notes that I was able to read on whether Gelsinger can pull off this turnaround. He's gonna spend a lot of money trying to do it. I think Wall Street is open to giving Intel another shot. Just to broaden it out to bigger tech for just a moment, Brian, because this is obviously something you and I and Miles have been talking about a lot, is about the rotation out of tech and into the so-called reflation or reopening trade, whatever you want to call it. We're sort of at this point now where we're trying to figure out if we're at an inflection point where that's going to reverse or if we're just going to continue to see some back and forth there. As you see Fed officials like Jerome Powell talk down the effect or the impact, we're going to see rampant inflation because of new stimulus plans as they have done. So I think that's where you're seeing tech reawaken. But at the end of the day, I think for a more strong or just a stronger trend here in tech stock, you're going to need to see first quarter earnings because that is when the comparisons for a lot of these big cap tech companies are at their strongest for the year. And it's when you could see the strongest growth decelerations for a lot of big cap tech names. If they could come out here, beat handling on sales, 
upbeat handling on earnings, it would go a long way to, I think, reawakening the big cap tech trade. Yeah, and in a little while here, we're going to talk to Sean Darby of Jefferies, who predicts not only a consumer spending increase, but also a corporate spending increase. Intel, obviously an example of that. I'm curious, we'll get his take on what that means maybe for other tech companies as well. That's the incredible journey of Intel, from its humble beginnings to becoming a $220 billion semiconductor empire. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Intel's legacy and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. What do you think about Intel's impact on the tech world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.